Welcome back to the Brothers Brand Podcast, episode 156, ranking NFL stadiums, part three, the grand finale, the Mac Daddy of them all, stadiums 10 to 1. The Brothers Brand are coming in hot with their top sports center. No, 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 top 10. Unbelievable entry there, Rob. Way to kick off things. And that's an introduction I've never seen. But what well, happens this is- when you have a couple beers? This is going to be a podcast that our listeners have never heard before. And this is the content that the Brothers Brandt provide. We've experienced almost all NFL stadiums. We've been able to go through from the least popular NFL stadium to tonight's episode, which will feature, as you talked about, 10 through numero uno. I cannot wait to go through this and unpack it with you for our listeners. It's going to be an epic show, Rob. Rick, we had the bottom bun two episodes ago. Remember that time we were in Dallas, Texas, and McDonald's forgot to put on the bottom bun? Unbelievable. We started with the bottom bun. We got to the patty last episode, and now we're at the top bun, the The brioche. The brioche? It's brioche pretzel. Oh, 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 you dirty dog, you. That's dirty the dog. bun you look for. It's like a pretzel roll from, from Del Bonos. Exactly. Now, in this episode, we might as well just get into it because these are the ones that we're really, really excited about to share with you all. Without further ado, number 10, home of the Kansas City Chiefs, G-E-H-A Field at Arrowhead Stadium is the technical name. You can just call it Arrowhead. This stadium was built in 1972, located in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. 76,000 fans. What's really cool about this, Rob, you and I have been to Kauffman Stadium, which, which sits adjacent to yeah. Arrowhead Stadium. These two are right next to each other. It uh, is a really cool atmosphere in September when both teams are in it and playing. But the fun fact about Arrowhead Stadium is that in 2014, they set the Guinness World Record for the loudest stadium at 142.2 decibel. Yes. It's loud. They, they bring it. Loud. Wow. And when it gets frigid, Rob, they have the coils underneath their field like most of the stadiums do in the northern part of the United States. So um, they've got some tech-infused um, attributes to modernize this older stadium. Again, it's over 50 years old, but it's got this history to it that the Midwesterners love. Yeah. Yeah, KC football, it's another thing out there. I mean, it's uh, just the Royals, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think we have a soccer team now, so it's it's all football uh, all the time out there. And uh, the Coils, yeah, we saw those on display this past week with Miami visiting Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the frigid temperatures there, and it gets blisteringly cold <laughs> in the winter time. That is a hell of a place to play. Um, let's move on to number nine. Uh, Atlanta Falcons Stadium, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, uh, created in 2017 in Atlanta, Georgia, holds 75,000. And Rick, this was the Brothers Brandt attended the first game ever at the stadium. There's a retractable, there's a retractable pinwheel roof of eight translucent triangular panels. Say that 10 times fast. Um, and... Just a beautiful stadium. The uh, acoustics in there make the stadium so loud. They purposely designed it that way. Uh, you know, it was it replaced the Superdome. So Atlanta had a dome before. They kept a dome. Uh, one of my favorite facts about the stadium, before we get into our shenanigans there, is uh, Arthur Blank. Uh, blank? Black? Arthur Blank. Blank. He... Um, owner of the Falcons decided not to raise prices of food. 
And it's like one of the only stadiums in the country that you can actually go to and you don't feel like you're getting ripped off when you get your beer, hot dog, sandwich and all that. That was one of my favorite things of like the four times we've been there. We've literally been there four times. And they also have brought in people from Disney World and they've figured out a way to make their concessions move quickly. Nobody enjoys going to get a hot dog or a drink and missing a majority of the game standing in line waiting for their concessions. So they actually have deployed the same type of strategy they do in Disney World where the lines keep moving, you feel like you're making progress, and you can quickly get your food. Rob, not only are prices great, service is great. And I want to talk about those translucent triangular panels up there. Talk to this me. Is, this is a feature of the stadium, which is so unique. It's a closed structure, but in the middle, it actually has an opening hole that kind of takes up the majority of a football field around the 50 yard line and not the entire field, but it opens up. And when this thing opens and close, it actually looks like a bird's wings extended. They're the Atlanta Falcons. So this engineering is super unique. It's the only one in the world. And um, as you said, we've been there many times. Tell the listeners a little bit about our escapades. Yeah. Um, well, the first time we ever went there was back in 2017 when it opened up, and that was our trifecta. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest days in the Brothers Brandt lives, besides for our weddings and my son being born and all that stuff, it's got a rank top. Right there at the number five spot for me. The unthinkable. Three major college football games in one day. And not only did we do that, we bought nosebleed tickets and we got down onto the field for every single one of those games, wearing absurd tuxedos, lanyards, and having a ball. Clemson at 12, Georgia at four, Atlanta, FSU versus the number four FSU Seminoles versus the number one Alabama Crimson Tide. They were hyping it up as the greatest opener of all time, the GOAT. Uh, did not live up to the hype, but we had an absolute blast there, Rick. Uh, we were rocking our our crimson attire. We got on the field. We got a picture. Uh, I'm pretty sure our seats were nosebleed seats to get in. Uh, so that was our first experience there. And then we had the privilege of uh, coming back to that stadium uh, for an SEC championship game where we got to see the Bulldogs, the Dogs, versus the uh, – Alabama Crimson Tide. And we saw Jalen Hurts himself lead them back from an epic comeback in, at halftime to win it for Alabama. Uh, just an absolute thriller. And then we stayed over the next day and we went to a uh we went to a uh Atlanta Falcons football game. Oh, but I regress. Uh after our Alabama FSU game. That following Monday, we were there for a Tennessee Volunteers and uh, Tennessee Volunteers Georgia Tech Chick-fil-A kickoff classic. Double overtime. It was an instant classic. Instant classic thriller. And one of my favorite parts, Rick, is we dress up, we wear the tuxedos. And for that, for that Saturday game, we got on the field. And then we just like walked by security. <laughs> no one said anything. And then the next day, the next time we were there, two days later, we had orange tuxedos on and a security guard grabbed me and he goes, yo, man, these two guys look just like you just had the same tuxedo. They had crimson tuxedos for Alabama two days ago. And I'm like, and, and he's like, I took a picture with him and I go, oh, dude, that's us. And he goes, no way. And he looked at the picture. He goes, holy crap. And he goes, can I get a picture with you guys today? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. That was a, such a great time. We love Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The Brothers Brand will be back one day, sure. but that is up there in the top 10 for sure. Moving on along to number eight is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium. This is known as Raymond James Stadium. It was built in 1998. So not even in this century, but in 1998, this structure was created it holds 75,000 people, 
And I think one of the things that we find to be most unique about this stadium is its replica 103 foot pirate ship and cannons at the north end of the stadium, Rob. This is so cool. You could make the case that no other NFL team has any type of feature to their stadium more attached to who they are as a team. Yeah. I don't think you can. And that's why we love this stadium. They've had three Super Bowls there, and their most recent Super Bowl was actually back in 2021. It was the first Super Bowl ever where the home team of that city, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, won the Super Bowl in its actual stadium. So uh, after 50 years of that never happening, the Buccaneers bucked the trend. And um, it's known for having some excellent grass surface. And it's just always been a stadium that uh, we've uh, loved passionately. And uh, that's why it's here in the top 10. Absolutely. Absolutely. Moving on to number seven, uh, which uh, this is your list, not mine. Uh, You have the San Francisco 49ers Levi Stadium built in 2014 in Santa Clara, California, 65,500 seats capacity uh it's near san jose so 40 miles south of san francisco so at that point you might as well just rename yourself to the san jose 49ers i Uh, think that's that that that's a fair point you raise rob and we'll get into that in just a little bit but go ahead tell the listeners more uh, about this stadium hosted super bowl 50 and 60 it's got a massive lower bowl suites on one side and a rooftop farm which i don't disagree with you it's got a nice rooftop farm it's kind of got that fenway park farm uh vegetables growing on the top of the roof which is very nice fenway for those of you that don't know if you go to boston and you do a tour of fenway uh park uh they'll have the they'll show you the the gardens up top uh that also feed the feed the stadium with the lettuce and the tomatoes so um i think that's cool rick but i gotta admit this if this was my list ain't cracking the top 10 and that's the thing here rob it is not necessarily just your list just my list it's not necessarily the viewers list the thing here rob is that each stadium has something unique and special to offer and it might not be what rob brand or rick brandt loves it might not be what rick, Mitch Buehler this loves. is your list how can you say it's not your list it's your list i you thought long and hard about this i thought long and hard about this it ha- hosted that iconic Peyton Manning riding off into the sunset Super Bowl sure. Broncos over Panthers Super Bowl 50 with cold play at halftime. It's set to host Super Bowl 60 in a couple of years. And this massive lower bowl, I want to talk, I want to break this down a little bit more. They have about two thirds of the seating capacity at Levi Stadium is in the lower bowl making it one of the largest lower bowls in the NFL. They have the suites, a lot like Ford Field in Detroit, almost exclusively on one side of the stadium. And what it does is it brings those fans in the upper deck even closer to the playing surface, opposed to the traditional stadium that has suites broken out on side different sides of the stadium and the upper decks are kind of like, you know, the traditional upper decks. So it's really done a nice job of bringing the intimacy of that stadium inward towards the field. And then yes, the farm Rob, it's California. You know, they believe in certain things out in California that maybe not the rest of the country believes in. And the farm concept that truly feeds taxes. the stadium is, is huge. And yes, they've got high taxes out there, but they've also got Silicon Valley, known for being very tech-infused. Silicon Valley. When they built this stadium, they offered a lot of tech that other NFL stadiums did not, making it a very uh, fan-friendly stadium when it comes to ordering concessions, when it comes to navigating the stadium. They've got their own app. And this was things that were created back in 2014 before apps were apps 10 years ago. So um, I'm going to keep them here in the top 10. 
I personally enjoy the stadium. And uh, why don't we move on to a stadium that you are obsessed with in Love Seattle, it. Washington? Uh, yeah. So Seattle Seahawks, Lumen Field built in 2002. So, you know, 20 years ago, uh, Seattle, Washington, 68,740 seating capacity. Uh, in Soto, South uh, Southern District, I guess, uh, neighborhood uh, with views of downtown skyline. Twice is the loudest stadium. Partial roofs trap and amplify noise of the Knox, the Hawk's Nest. Rick, we went there uh, probably it was 2015, I believe, 2015. And we saw a Bears Seahawks game early on in the year. Seahawks end up winning like 35, nothing. Uh, and I remember distinctly walking in and they handed us these green head little like ear pieces. They were like, Hey, you might want, you might need these. And uh, we were like, no, we're good. And they're like, why don't you just take them just in case you need them. And we went to our seats and we needed them. It was extremely loud. It was the loudest stadium I've ever been in, in my entire life. That's it. That's all I got. Well, I'll tell you what, this stadium, Rob, is uniquely designed. You mentioned it, how the roofs trap and amplify that noise. And we've felt it firsthand. How it's located in downtown Seattle um, is really unique. Not a lot of stadiums are in the downtown city districts. They're typically out, um, you know, a drive like the San Jose example with the 49ers. But this one's actually located downtown. It's got some unique features to it. We've taken a behind-the-scenes tour of it, gone into the suites, the locker rooms. You've been in one of the bathtubs in there for the ice baths that the players get in before and after the games. Um, this stadium is definitely up there. Um, the Hawk's Nest is a cool spot within the stadium, and you've got to keep the Seattle Seahawks. If you're doing a road trip, at the top of your list for a stadium to check out twice. It's been actually statistically proven to be the loudest stadium. So their crowd brings it just like the Kansas city chiefs bring it. They, those two fan bases go back and forth trading the loudest stadium award. Here's a stadium, Rob ranking in at number five. That five. We're in the top five now, and we've got to bring the energy because this is us bank stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota, home to the Minnesota Vikings. Rob, this stadium was created in 2016. I think for uh, anybody who's in the sports world and enjoys sports, has an uh, iconic image in their mind of uh, that old Viking stadium that also was where the Minnesota Twins played baseball. And snow, just thankfully no event was taking place, but just falling through this old dome that had given away to the weight of this wintry storm. And um, thank goodness nobody was in there. Nobody got hurt. But at that point, the Minnesota Vikings said, we got to figure out a new stadium. And then we remember they played at the University of Minnesota for a couple of years. Thank you, Gophers. But it was time to move into some new digs. And I say digs with two Gs because – Stefan Diggs had the Minneapolis miracle against the New Orleans Saints in a legendary playoff game a few years back. But I digress because one of the things that makes this stadium so darn cool and why it's in the top five is because it was built with lightweight, translucent roofing and glazed giant glass pivoting doors at its entrance ways. And what these features allow for is a tremendous amount of natural light. It almost feels and looks as though the game is being played outdoors and not in a closed structure when you watch it and you feel it when you sit in it. And it can also bear the heavy snow that Minnesota is known for in its winter months. And this is why they have been able to host Super Bowls and Final Fours. This is the innovative mindset that the city had, and I applaud them for it. Your Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl in this stadium. It is an epic 
venue that all sports fans should get to. Couldn't agree more, Rick. Uh, you and I have not been there yet, so it is on both of our lists. Um, I love it. I think it's a phenomenal stadium. I think it's rightfully deserving in the, in the number five spot. Uh, it is fun to watch games there. Uh, I'll say it once. I'll say it twice. I'll say it a million times. You're going to build a stadium, put a dome on it so you can host a Super Bowl, so you can have concerts, so you can do stuff all year round and generate that money to get it back, right? So, and you're seeing that with Nashville. They're getting a new stadium, translucent light roofing. It's going to look amazing. It's going to hold Super Bowls. It's going to, it's going to have everything. So love it. Let's move on to another stadium that both you and I have not been to, but rightfully in the number four spot. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders, a Legion stadium built in 2020 in Las Vegas, Nevada, 65,000. It's holding this year's Super Bowl, silver and black exterior along the Las Vegas strip, an 85 foot torch and Al Davis and Al Davis flame roll in and roll in natural grass. Um, This stadium is one of the newest stadiums in the NFL. It's this and SoFi. And they learn. And this thing looks like the Death Star. This thing is the most perfect symbolism for the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, It is scary. It is intimidating. I've never been there. But just looking on TV, I'm like, oh, 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 that's badass. You want to talk about the buck ship? I want to talk about the Al Davis flame. That thing is cool. Uh, The next thing that I'll say is the roll-in turf, the roll-in grass field, taking the best of both worlds, putting it together with the stadium, the covering, the the, um, dome, but then also having natural grass there, just like the Arizona Cardinals have. I love that. Uh, Unbelievable stadium. I'm excited to check it off my list. And it's in Las Vegas. There's flights out there every day, every minute on the day. Whenever you want to get out to Vegas, you go to Vegas. Uh, the, it's It does not sleep that city. You want to bet your life away. You want to win your life. You do it, baby, on the Vegas Strip. You want to do whatever, you go to Vegas Strip. Yeah, Rob, this stadium is just in the middle of the desert. I've flown in and out of Vegas a couple times since it's been built, and Not only does it have that natural grass roll in that you talked about, like it does in Phoenix, it also has a turf field. Phoenix, Scottsdale, the Arizona Cardinals does not have a turf field. The Vegas stadium actually has the turf field because UNLV, the college plays there and they prefer turf. It allows them to do both without tearing up the actual grass field on the same weekend. It can host bowl games. This stadium, Rob, it's funny. All major sports shunned the idea of gambling, betting, Las Vegas five years ago. And in a short period of time, it has now flipped the script. And all professional sports have basically made a race to try to get to Vegas as quickly as they can because they know you can't hide the money. Seth Greenberg, baby. You can't hide the money. Uh, What a great podcast guest. And Um, so, Rob, yes, we will one day very, very soon make our way to Las Vegas to check out Allegiant Stadium. This one is a beauty. Now, I'm so excited for for the Knights to be there and they're going to get a baseball. They're going to get Oakland Athletics moving there. They're going to get a basketball team. They're going to have all four sports soon. Exactly. Number two and number three are shared by two teams, and rightfully so. This is the Los Angeles Chargers and the Los Angeles Rams home stadium. It also was built in 2020, and it is called SoFi Stadium. You have by now seen many games and images on TV and the internet of how epic this stadium in Inglewood, California truly is it seats 70,000 it's a fixed roof open air stadium let me say that again a fixed roof open air stadium those two just don't seem to go together but 
they created this one of a kind stadium in outside of LA where it is a massive covering this canopy as they refer to it, which covers not just the field and the seats, but additional areas around the iconic venue. And this translucent canopy is made up of panels. There and you are with that word again. It It's the hot topic. It's the way people are engineering stadiums. It's smart business. That's all I can say. It's science. science. And these panels have pucks in them. That's right. A hockey term puck is inside of a panel, which is a part of this canopy over the football field. And these pucks, thousands of them, allow for images and videos to be displayed on the roof as planes are flying in and out of LAX airport. So just absurd engineering, crazy concept, but it works. It's Los Angeles. They just hosted Super Bowl 56 a couple years ago, and the Los Angeles Rams were the ones that won that Super Bowl. Wow. And so in honor of that, I decided to switch the ball cap out. And I just got to give a round of applause to SoFi Stadium. They have very next to it is a uh, theater, seats about 6,000. It's called YouTube Theater, but it's attached to the stadium. The NFL Network has its headquarters out there. And then inside the stadium, hanging suspended from the canopy is the world's only infinity samsung ovular double-sided 4k video board this is i'm not even going to repeat that you're going to have to rewind the episode if you want to hear that again this video board that circles the field is one of a kind and another feature which rightfully places SoFi Stadium darn near at the top of this list. Yeah. And without further ado, Rob, not only will we eventually get to SoFi Stadium, but let's talk about the number one stadium NFL game day experience in all of America. And I'm going to pass the ball to you to take us home. Are you ready? I'm taking the ball. I'm dunking it. At number one, we have Title Town USA, the Green Bay Packers, Lambeau Field, built in 1957 in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tiny little town in Green or in Wisconsin, known as Green Bay. It seats 81,441. Die Hard Cheeseheads, named after longtime head coach uh, Vince uh, uh, Lam Lambeau, uh, and uh, second largest, oldest active stadium in the country. It's on Lombardi Avenue, and it is Title Town District restaurants, hotels, apartments. This thing is so cool, Rick. You and I had the privilege of going to this as one of the first games we checked off on our road trip back in 2013, a decade ago, when we started it. And we went to go see the Packers versus the Redskins in a, in a, in a September game. And, and Rick, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. We did a tour, the, tour of the stadium. We got to go out onto the field. We got to go into the owner's boxes. Uh it was an epic experience, Rick. We did the Lambo leap. Uh, I mean, geez. And, and, and uh, longtime head coach, Vince Lombardi, New Jersey native. Very fitting that we made it out there. Uh, Rick, this stadium is just one of a kind. Uh, take, take away a little bit more. I'll, I'll add some stuff, but just share with the listeners your thoughts. I don't want to take this whole thing. I can't, I can't handle the load. I can't handle it. Well, that's what I'm here for to do, Rob. And yeah, this stadium is the oldest active stadium in the NFL by a lot. <laughs> and um, they've gone through several renovations. 
this thing has expanded and it's taken on a life of its own. You talk about Title Town. They created this district very much like the Atlanta Braves created the battery around their baseball stadium, which we've talked about in previous episodes. But essentially a place where even when the team's not playing a game, it's fun to be there. There's stuff to do, hang out. Yeah. Um, what's so unique about this is you plop an NFL stadium into a small town USA. You could literally be, think about sitting, walking out your backyard and then seeing an NFL stadium right there. That's exactly the vibe that is Green Bay, Wisconsin. And the fans I want to talk about are the nicest fans there. And some of the stadiums and game day experiences that we ranked over the last three episodes took into consideration that fan experience. And at Lambeau Field, the fans are kind. You could be wearing an opposing team's jersey and you will be welcomed. And I remember the first time you and I went there, Rob, we hadn't been in our seats for more than a few minutes. And they people around us, they knew who we had gotten the tickets from. And they were asking if they wanted to get us anything at the concession stands. Would we interested in a drink or a hot dog um just very the inviting bratwurst. They got some bratwurst bratwurst are excellent out there and what's so unique is that the seats unless you're sitting in some of the suites the actual seats that the majority of the fans sit in are bleacher seats they're not those fancy seats with the cup holders and the back to it um you get 16 inches it doesn't matter your size it doesn't matter your shape you got 16 inch, inch inches and that is really important, especially during the cold months of the year, because they're huddled up and they're using the body heat from everybody to stay warm. It is a kind and friendly, inviting town. And all sports fans should one day make their way to Lambeau Field. Yeah. And Rick, uh, I just want to add to this. Uh, when we got there, we were like trying to figure out where to go to tailgate and have a good experience. And they have a massive bar and stage like set up, like encapsulated uh, in this dome, like in the parking lot. And it's called the frozen tundra because that's the nickname for Lambo is the frozen tundra of how cold it gets up there. Um, zero degree games, negative temperatures. So we went in there, Rick. And, and I remember first thing on the loudspeaker uh, playing was OAR, which is our favorite band. And I was just like, man, Rick, how cool is this? Like, we're here. We got our cheese heads on. Uh, and then we start. And then I don't know if it was a guy there, but we started talking to some people and I told them it was our first time going. So you were talking about like the fans when we sat down, they were offering to buy us food. Uh, but as we came into the stadium and we were scanning our tickets, a guy was like, hey, like, has this been your first time? We're like, yeah, it's the first time he goes, I'm buying you a beer. I'm buying you a bratwurst. Let's go. And like he made us follow him to the closest concession stand and bought us a beer and a brat. And he goes, welcome to Green Bay. Welcome to Lambeau. And dude, like so cool. Uh, when we did the stadium uh, tour, just being on the field and looking up at the glass boxes and it's kind of a darker green than their, than their actual like colors are. So it makes it a little more ominous. It's like it's like a little more like terrifying being on the field. <laughs> um, and then you want to talk about the coil system too. They were the ones that I think invented it. They ran coils underneath the field and they also ran coils underneath the stadium seating because of the fear of icicles um, in, the, in the cold winter months. But again, number one, Green Bay Packers, Lambeau Field, absolute must for any football fan, for any sports fan. You got to go to a game in Green Bay. Well, listeners, that concludes the three-part series from the Brothers Brant on the Brothers Brant podcast, documenting our favorite in order NFL stadium and game day experiences. We hope that you enjoyed the listen. We cannot wait to bring you more excellent content in our upcoming podcast episodes. So thank you for listening. And for all you listeners out there, I'm Rick Brandt. And I'm Rob Brandt. And we're the Brothers Brandt. Thanks for listening.